This is the Four Man Rush. Hello, Panther fans, and welcome to another podcast of the Four Man Rush. I'm your host, Timmy VO, here with Kevin, Larry, and Will. We're waiting on Monty to get here, and, you know, we'll let you know when he does. So, the Panthers have finished one preseason. They had an eventful practice with the old, uh, was it Buffalo Panthers? I mean, <clears throat> Buffalo Bills, excuse me. And uh, we've got another game coming up. So, we're going to talk about those three things right there for you. Cam's looking good. Our defense is looking good. And hopefully we can just keep going uh, going along in this trajectory and uh, lead up to the Rams and punch somebody in the mouth. Who ya? So let's jump right into this wonderful podcast because the football's rolling along and we're we're loving it. We're loving it. Let's start with Will. Um, and we're going to recap the Bears uh, Bears game real quick. Um, Will, um, let's. Uh, uh, let's let's touch on the uh, defense first because uh, I, I, I know I, I saw a lot of good things out of that, and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, pundits were talking a lot about the defense as a whole. But so, what was your recap on the defense and uh, how they played in your in your opinion? Overall, you know, I saw some good things, but I still think you know it's you know it's getting the rust off. You know, the first preseason game, there were a lot of things that they need to get better at. You know, things I really like. You know, Brian Burns first and foremost. You know, making the most of those 10 snaps, getting those two sacks. I think it's funny, uh, Ron Rivera in his interview was talking about they planned to play him a little bit longer if he wanted to get him more snaps, but he was just so dominant, you know, did so little and <laughs> got the Bears off the field that, you know, he had to take them out early. So, you know, just like seeing that from your first-round pick to be able to dominate people that he's supposed to dominate. Mm -hmm. You know, the pass rush as a whole was uh, pretty solid. You know, I like what I saw from Marquise Haynes on the pass rush side as well. You know, he had two sacks, had a pretty good game. Um, no, I thought Rashawn Golden all over the field making plays. You know, That's he true. saw the peanut punch. He made a good mm -hmm. pass breakup in coverage. You know, he had, came in on the blitz and, you know, made a play there. So you have to like what you see from there. You know, I mm -hmm. think, you know, he's starting to get confident and become that playmaker that we saw at Tennessee. But, you know, I think on the negative side, I think the gap control against the run game was pretty poor at times. Yes. You know, the edge players weren't. Yeah. Um, keeping contained so the yeah. Bears were able to get some big run plays as a result of that. I was kind of disappointed with um, Vernon Butler being in his um, contract year. You know, I just expected him to be more consistent and finally come to his own as a pro. But, you know, second, third play of the game, he's just getting blown off the ball. You know, blew him out the A gap to the Z gap, basically. <laughs> you know, and the Bears just better us right up the middle. And, you know, and then just playing against, you know, Rookies and second, third string players, you just would like to see um, him make more plays and be more effective. But right. I just didn't see enough out of him. So, you know, who knows what the future holds for Big Burn. So that's pretty much it. You know, I think the um, run defense just got to be better. You know, got to be more disciplined with that gap control, you know, run fits. You know, I think like Marquise Haynes on that touchdown play, if you watch closely, he attacked the pulling guard with the wrong shoulder. So he did what we you know, he attacked with his inside shoulder and allowed the running back to bounce the yeah. ball outside. So if he attacked with the right shoulder, the linebacker filled properly. So he linebacker would have been able to make the play. So this is some things that, you know, we got to see better come this upcoming game on Friday. That's true. That's true. That, that, that pissed me off when he dipped his right shoulder inside like that. How the hell are you going to set the edge doing that BS, man? But anyway. <laughs> that's over. That's over. Um, Larry, um, I know you're a hog molly genius. So um, how, how do you think the O-line had panned out against the Bears? You want me to talk about the O-line or are we still covering some defense? Well, well your choice, man. We're gonna, we know, you know, Fort Mayweather's going to cover it all. So I'm going to the O-line because, honestly, you know, I would just be an echo of pretty much everything Will said defensively. Mm. Um, one thing I did want to point out is, you know, guys got to take – they need to take a break on Trey Boston. You know, he missed all the mini camp. Yeah. Only had a couple of practices. Let that man knock the rust off. I'm sure yeah. he's going to be an asset because when I watched the game over again, I saw the range and I also saw the IQ mm -hmm. and I saw the instincts. So <laughs> just give him some time. He'll get right. You know, it took Eric Reed a couple of games to get right. Other than that, you know, it's pretty much everything that will echo to the defensive end of the ball. The defensive end of the ball 
One thing I did want to point out is, you know, I'm a Florida State fan. I've been watching Brian Burns very, very closely. Mm -hmm. um, he's developed in a short period of time. He's learned some some moves that typically you don't learn until you get to the pro level. I saw him do a bull rush where he actually uh, manipulated the offensive lineman's hands. He pushed him straight up into the air, which assisted the bull rush. And, you know, people complained about his size and his strength. It's not always about that. Technically, he's becoming a sound player where he'll be able to have an effective bull rush. That's something that I did pick up on. Um, usually when you have a, a, a good game, a film session is pretty boring, you know, but I had a ball this week because I've seen a lot of mistakes on the offensive side of the ball. Hmm. Um, one of the guys that, you know, stood out to me was Tyler Lawson. This is a guy that's been in, well, I'm sorry, Larson. He's been in our system for quite a few years now. He has some games, starting games under his belt. That's right. He just looked like a little boy out there. You know, the technique <laughs> was terrible. Um, I seen a guy bull rush him damn near straight into the quarterback, and it was just a bad rep from start. Like, he came out of his stance, stood straight up, no no center of gravity, no balance. He just looked like a rag doll out there. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't expect that from a, a seasoned veteran, maybe a undrafted free agent, but not Tyler, not Tyler Larson. No. Um, Dennis Daly pretty much gave us what we expected. He's a project. Uh, he had a lot of good reps in there. He was pretty effective, even in the, even in the run game. Even though, it, even though it looked like we had no run game at all, we could get no push, he did show some glimpses of being an effective run blocker. Um, same things pretty much stand for him. He's got to work on his pass block reps. Um, what we got to see from Greg Little was pretty – Pretty motivational. You know, he had a few good reps. You know, just like any rookie, he let a, uh, a edge rusher go around him. He had a couple of bad reps. But overall, I think he might have graded the highest out of all the other offensive linemen. So that's something that you do want to see from your second rounder. And um, that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. You know, it's a lot of work to be done. I was not pleased with the play of the offensive line as a whole. We got no push. It was very, very difficult to get a gauge for us how good our running backs will be because they had no lanes to run through. I'm sure that's something John Masco is going to uh, definitely emphasize this week, and we've probably seen some of it with the joint practices that we've been having. You know that's right. You know that's, and that's right. pretty much it. Yeah, you know that's right. Uh, Kevin, now you had, you know, uh, ringside seats, so to say, to the practices and things of that nature leading up to uh, leading up to the Bears game. Did you see a, uh, uh, a crossover from practice to the field, or did you see some discrepancies um, from that transition? What, what do you think, man? Yeah, I feel like I saw a combination of both, to be honest with you. Um, basically, like, what I saw, what I've seen in practice is what I've been saying here on the podcast, and I want you guys to just speed, speed, and speed. Mm. I saw a lot of speed out on the field, you know, Thursday night whenever we were the – when the Panthers were, you know, doing their thing against the Bears, particularly, you know, speed on defense, speed at the skill positions. You know, these are the things that I saw happening on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, with none of the first team players playing on either side of the ball, some guys that I saw kind of, you know, caught me off guard a little bit, but, you know, Taking back on my mental notes, I remember seeing some things from them, some flashes and training camp. Uh, overall, you know, I've been saying before training camp started, watch out for Marquise Haynes. His three-fold fit is going to be something that's going to benefit him probably the most. You know, this is the same kind of scheme that they ran down in, at Ole Miss. And, you know, hey, lo and behold, it, it translated over well because the moves that he was doing – to the Bears, I, I was seeing similar moves done in, in training camp. So pretty much a product of, you know, you practice well, you you play well. And he's someone that definitely stood out to me in training camp. And, you know, lo and behold, it came true, you know, in live reps against a, a different opponent. So it was definitely good to see Marquise Haynes kind of get his, uh, hey, I'm, I'm really in the NFL action. First game preseason, not, you know, not finna buy his jersey or nothing, anything quite yet, but it was just good to see materialize from his end as from training camp onto the uh, onto the actual game field against a different opponent. Another aspect that uh, that I saw that translated over was I just really think that the defense line and the offensive line, even the backups, 
I see that we're coaching really is something that's being worked on. I know Larry touched on um, being able to see the different footwork aspects of it. I didn't see a whole lot of pull blocks. I don't know if you did, Larry. You can let me know if you did over your analysis. I just saw a little too much high pass for me, and that was something that didn't translate over because at Walford, you know, I'm seeing low pads and firing off the ball. So that's one of the aspects from a line point of view, particularly the offensive line, that that didn't carry over. So hopefully that's something that'll be, you know, ironed out. But overall, though, I like what I saw. And for what it's worth for the first preseason game, um, I'm fairly pleased, but I, I have bigger expectations. So I expect a little bit better product to come out when we play the Bills Friday night. Panther Nature, you got to excuse me and Kevin, man. We're not too too ecstatic to talk about the things that we specialize in, and that's really the trenches. Because honestly, offensively, it just wasn't a good performance. Uh, just to touch on what Kev said, high pads. You know, these guys are standing straight up. That's exactly why Tyler Larson got abused the way he did. Like, mm-hmm. it was exactly what he said. He snapped the ball, so straight up, took a bull rush right to the chin. Yep, no leverage. So you, you know, you just can't have that kind of stuff, especially when you're trying to protect your backup. You know, what if it was Cam out there? Tyler got moved right out the way. So that's just a uh, touch on what Kevin said. And, Kevin, one other play. I know that you said that you, you noticed a lot from Marquise Haynes, but I'm going to tell you somebody that you've been quietly telling me about that I kind of slept on. That was the RB, Bonifant, man. Yeah, he hey, really he, he, he acted really, a fool. He really big last week. <laughs> that was how he's been in practicing, you know, how that translated to the game. Reggie Bonifon, and I finally got his name right because I was messing up last week, you know, with Buttercups last week. So, oh, Buttercup. You know, after that performance, I had to put some respect on that man's name, so I actually did practice saying his name before we came on tonight. So, yeah, Mr. Reggie Bonifon, what I've been seeing from him in practice definitely carried over. I'm not going to lie, I thought he was just a gimmick guy, you know, when I saw that, hey, he played quarterback, running back, wide receiver at Louisville. I don't really remember seeing much about him last year, the – to be honest with you guys, but he's someone that he's going to make this running back situation quite interesting because if the thing is to emulate what McCaffrey does, I mean, hey, whether it's shifting out the backfield in motion, I mean, he's someone that's that can do that. And then with Scarlett missing time like he's doing and Holyfield with his fumble issues, I mean, you know, nothing's a given. So we'll we just see where it goes, but he's someone that if he keeps improving like he's doing, he's he's gonna make it real hard to to for the choice to be made on who's gonna be the um two running back the running back backups to Christian McCaffrey. And hey, if he gets it, I'm all for it. I, I won't have no problem if he's he's selected because I think his skill set easily translates into the North Turner offense as far as what we like to do when it comes to running back. So, mm. hey, I'm all for it. Go Bonifon. Mm-hmm. Thing is, though, what I really right, like cool. the I running back that. position, though, you had um, Alex Armour, you know, the way they were getting him the ball, you know, running in the flats, you know, catching po- balls out the backfield. You know, they had him as a single back formation. You know, he saw that like, good vision. He cut back, you know, got a good six-yard gain on the play. So, you know, with Armour, maybe get three to six touches. What does that mean for the other running backs as well? So I really like what I saw from him, too. That's a good point, man. He's showing you that he's more than just a fullback. <laughs> you know, I I seen a crazy post on uh, the Carolina Panthers Facebook page. Some guy was talking about bringing Mike Tober back. <laughs> That's just completely unnecessary. Armor's showing you that he can pretty much do most of the things Tober did for us in the past and do it at a higher level. Absolutely. One question I have for you, though, Will, is, um, you know, how Charlemagne, he does the donkey of the day. <laughs> I like to call it just jackass of the day, like the piss poor performances. Offensively, I'm going to go with Tyler Larson, but you talked about, you know, running gaps and, and staying in your lanes. Mm. That's going to be pivotal for us when you look at the linebacker depth because even when the running back did break open and get past that first level, I just did not like what I seen from Jared Norris, man, at all. <laughs> like, I'm kind of concerned about the linebacker depth going forward. I know you got young guys like Carter. Yep. and Andre Smith, but, you know, they need time to develop. What are you going to do in the meantime when you're looking for a veteran like Norris to step up, man? He's looking like a basically a David Mayo 
It took the words right out of my mouth. You know, he just struggled in coverage the way Mayo used to, you know, getting lost, guys getting behind him. Yeah, that, you know, just not having yeah. awareness of, you know, who's running behind him when he's dropping in that zone. So, I mean, but the thing is, you know, Mayo's what, the fifth string linebacker? I think you got Luke Shaq Carter, who was injured, and Andre Smith ahead of him. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we have to see what we got in Carter and uh, Smith before we, you know, right off the linebacker depth at this stage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, as far as the linebacker, I'm sorry. No, go, go ahead, Tim. No, 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 you good. Yeah, as far as linebackers go, you know, you know, Carter has been dealing with some some injuries and he's trying to get back in the game shape. So his performance this coming Friday night against Buffalo, I'm definitely looking forward to. I I've seen enough from Jared Norris to just feel like, hey, let him be the special teams guy. You know, him and him and Colin Jones just need to uh, you know, do their thing on special teams and you know, they can come in in the fourth quarter when you're up by 28 with like three minutes left. You know, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's my comfort for him. I mean, I understand it was the first game. I understand give them time to get better, but it was just basic day one fundamentals and pass coverage that he was just messing up. Like when we're going to do our zone concepts, man, I mean, he was just like take three or four steps and that was it. No, you got to keep dropping, bro. And, and the Bears figured it out, and they was targeting the tight end, you know, right, you know, right behind them, you know, splitting behind him and in front of the safety. So I think that guys like uh, I can't think who's that number forty three, the one with that uh, one drafted guy out of California, uh, Kunesa. Yeah, yeah, he got, yeah. He got like a sack in the game, you know, late in the game in the fourth quarter. And yeah, he was yeah. someone I saw flying and moving around too. So I, I think a guy like him, you know, has a chance to. Possibly, you know, still a fifth, sixth spot, mm. you know, at linebacker. I mean, it's just it's it's a lot still to be de to be determined. But I think we got some quality options on here, and I really feel like all of our answers is truly on this roster from top to bottom. You know, in spite of the criticisms that are actually being told right now, I think it's one of the better ninety man rosters we've ever taken into a preseason to training camp, and I I'm gonna feel comfortable with whatever. You know, fifty three plus ten on a practice squad. We come out with. Yeah, man, definitely the fastest we've had in a while, and uh, I really like Kyle Allen the way he came out there and and was was uh, heading heading the uh, the helm, so to say, man. He and I said this in the last podcast. You know, I, I'm a big Allen fan. I like his I like his poise on the field. I like his presence. Um, you know, he's a tall, lanky guy that can put the ball where it needs to be. I, I like that kid, man. I like him. But yeah, that old line. Psh, psh, <laughs> God Almighty! <laughs> and before we move on, you know, we were talking about linebackers, but uh, I just want Panther Nation to know about one guy because they probably got a million questions about him because we never, ever, ever talked about him. But did y'all know this number forty nine out there? Yeah, I saw him. Forty nine was uh, his name is Antoine Williams. I seen him get a lot of reps. Uh, one weakness that I saw is that, you know, they kept trying to chop block him, and he has an issue getting off of the chop block. Mm. But other than that, I see some range. I see him flying around the field. I'm just curious as to why he may have gotten so many reps. So what I'm going to do is pay a little bit more attention to him in practice going forward, and I'm definitely going to look to see what he does in this next preseason game as well. But I saw number 49 around a lot last night. Well, not last night, but last game. Yeah. Have you also noticed number 27, Thornton, getting a lot of reps at outside corner? Uh, he's someone, yeah, he's someone else that I've noticed is uh, getting reps that we, you know, as fans have not been speaking on. So, you know, he's someone else to talk about. You know, we're talking about the usual corners, you no know, Jackson and Bradbury and Elder and, you know, Javon Elliott. But, you know, number 27, Thornton, he's, he's been getting a lot of reps at outside corner. So, obviously, the coaches see something that we uh, need to put more attention to as well. Yeah, I mean, we we have a pretty deep roster, man. Uh, other and, and and again, the the linebacker core it does have its its mark. You know, it, we, I think I think we are kind of short in the linebacker core. Now, granted, they might grow as the season goes along, but I just hope that people stay healthy, our guys stay healthy long enough to where we can get that type of development. If if Luke goes down, dude, I don't. Oh, Jesus Christ, I don't know, man. But that front boy, whew, that rotation. <laughs> yeah, that front line is awesome. <laughs> oh my lord! 
Hey, man. I think it's just mainly because, you know, we haven't seen Jermaine Carter. You know, he got a lot of reps last season, but yeah. like Kevin said, he was dealing with some injuries and stuff like that. Yeah. So we just don't know what he is as of yet, but we're just hoping that, you know, if we needed him to start a game, he can come in and not miss a beat. Yeah. My last memories of him was him blowing plays. I think when uh, yeah. who we played the Giants, where he did a little, little receiver pass, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the OBJ yep. to Saquon. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, the main Carter that was all on him. He missed that. So that was him. You just want to see that growth, and we haven't been able to see him on the field. So that's mm-hmm. definitely something that we're going to be looking forward on in the playing Buffalo. Yeah. Let me ask y'all real quick. How y'all feel about linebackers and defensive backs, how often they should be rotating the game? Because you know what defensive linemen is typically every other series or something like that. Like, are y'all comfortable with, like, Luke and Shaq getting 100% of the snaps? You know, like, I was just looking at the snap count last year. It just seems like we lean real heavy on the starters. Like, moving forward, is that something like Will? I mean, you think that's something that's – okay i mean because they make plays or should we be more rotational with the back seven you know to me i don't think luke and Shaq should ever come off the field so i'm perfectly fine with them getting um 100 percent of the snaps especially at that position Mm -hmm. you know you just have it's just you know at the linebacker position all it takes is one missed gap assignment and it's a 60 yard touchdown run Mm -hmm. so you know you're taking luke or Shaq off the field you know, putting a guy there who's inexperienced and not used to getting those reps, you know, you just open that door up for the make those potential mistakes. And then just the playmaking ability they both have. You know, Luke and Shaq are our best, two of our best playmakers on defense, and any one play they can make can just change the course of the game. So, you know, you're going to miss that tackle for loss that Luke may get from studying film, yeah. you know, that may swing the course of a game because, you know, Ultimately, a football game comes down to four or five explosive plays that can determine the outcome. And Luke's a guy that can either prevent some of those plays or make some of those plays. So I just think they're, you know, they're well-conditioned athletes. You know, they, I just think they need to be on the field as often as possible. Yeah. I agree with Will 100%. You know, it's just like on offense, Cam never come off the field. But we can't have Luke coming off the field even on defense, you know got to put your best players on the field at all times if you can. Years past, that was Olsen, always taking the snaps. Last year, it was McCaffrey. I just think when you were at a certain level, when you're a certain level of player, what we call, what we categorize as a elite starter, they shouldn't come off the field. Now, depending on who we play against, you know, it could be an empty set. I wouldn't mind, you know, Shaq taking a, a player or two off, but, you know, definitely first and second down, Shaq has to be on the field. That's in my opinion. As far as the secondary goes to answer your question, uh, Kevin, it's just got to come down to what the matchups are. You know, you mentioned earlier, you know, there's going to be some times where we're in three uh, three safety sets. That's cool in run situations, but in the past situation, you might want to put an extra DB out there that's good with coverage. Like, you know, guys that we've seen, Elliot and possibly Thornton, Thornton in the future. So you never know. I think with the secondary, it just come down to the matchups, you know, However the team is coming out, put your best players on their best players and make sure they match up well. But in general, number 59, don't come off the field, dog. We need you on the field at all times. Without a doubt. I ain't got a problem with uh, with Luke being on the field, man. Um, it's, <sighs> rotating the safeties and corners, like Larry said, I, it's situational. Absolutely, and you know, and R- Rivera likes matchups. You know, that's that's his whole thing. Uh, that's that's pretty much how he's been drafting uh, for the, well, especially on defense for for the past couple of years. Is that matchup situation? So, I mean, I, I don't have any problem with it. If they can, if they can go, they put them out there. If not, you know, let's 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 be smart with it. But you know, don't sacrifice too much uh, to 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 make that happen. In in, in my point of view. Yeah, but just to clarify about the package, you know, Dante, Bradbury, Reed, and probably Trey are four guys that will probably play 100% of snaps every game. Yep. So the guys that will be rotating would be, you know, big nickel package. You'll go over Sean Golden. So what, what's a big nickel for? Golden can give you better pass coverage than, say, a linebacker like Carter or Smith. Mm-hmm. But he also gives you better run support than, like, a Seymour or an Elliott. So in a pass formation, you're going to go small nickel. You know, you'll have JV and Elliott, maybe Thornton, Cockrell, or Seymour, somebody like that. Mm-hmm. So that's on your passing downs. You need that speed and quickness at the nickel position. 
Um, so we practiced with the Bills today, and uh, there was some good news coming out of there. Um, I wasn't aware of any bad news, but, you know, um, no news is good news to me, so uh, <laughs> that's always a good thing. Um, <clears throat> so let, uh, let's let's chat a little bit about the uh, the, the Bills Panthers preseason pre matchup. <laughs> um, let's, let's start with you, Kev. Um, what, what did you What did you check out today and uh, and uh, diagnose with that practice going on? Yeah, well, from what I saw was going on as the, this word is being thrown around more by the Panthers. They had a lot of juice out there today. I think seeing another team really got the players locked in and focused. Not that it wasn't before, but, mm-hmm. you know, they just really was, you know, practicing at, at, a, at a different level today. I I saw the defensive line just have a party with the, the Bills offensive <laughs> line, whether it was individual drills or team drills. You know, it was just pretty much – Okay, whose turn is it now to to, to do what they got to do? I mean, from Poe to Short to McCoy to you know Burns, you know before he went out with a with his uh, ankle, and you know it was just it was just like a nonstop show for the for the for the front seven. Like I think the longest run Buffalo had today was like four yards, maybe. <laughs> Oh no! (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me. Four yards. That's it. (laughs) Wow. Hey, I mean, if 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 it comes out longer out there, talk because I was going back and forth between both fields because how they had to set up today was Panthers offense versus Bill defense on one field, and in the field right beside it. It was Bill's offense versus Panther defense, and I was trying to be kind of cat a corner in the in the middle, and I was just going back for. But yeah, I, that's funny. That's Bill's funny. Bill's fans were were mostly quiet. The only time they got loud was when they got the two interceptions, one off of Cam and one off of Will Greer. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, <laughs> it was it was it was it was like rabbits pissing on cotton, fellas. I mean, Bill's <laughs> mafia was. Was 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 in mute button, that's you know. Funny. So <laughs> that's how it was. But you know what I realized is that Curtis Samuel's the real deal. Uh, he got what's his name? Um, was it White from from Buffalo? Yeah. Like Trey White is like Trey White is yeah. uh, he first team All Pro. Yeah. Ooh. When I say he had him beat by five yards, like I mean. <laughs> Oy. Easily, that ball traveled over fifty yards in the air by Cam, and it just fell right in the bread basket. And I'm like, mm. "Yo, this shit right here, <laughs> <laughs> this this Diesel. is what I like. This, this this is what I like to see. I mean, it was just you know a, a young and upcoming wide receiver against a top. Can we say? Can we call him a top five corner? White? Oh, certainly. He's first team all pro. Okay. Okay, okay. I just want—I I just want to make sure because people think because it's the Bills, you know. Yeah. I saw comments. Oh, it's the Bills secondary. Ooh, you know, I'm like, so nah, he's one of the best in the game. If they don't know about T. White, they better do their homework. So, mm. yeah, yeah, definitely, we got to give Curtis his, his kudos today. Put spec yeah, so on Kurt just making plays against whoever's lined up in front of him. So it wasn't just you know Bradbury, you know, that was you know getting picked on as so many people. <laughs> Oh, I ain't even gonna get into that right now. But yeah. overall, though, it was just it was just good seeing the uh, Panthers defense look as good as we've been advertised. Offense has some sluggish ways. The Bills defense did get salty on them at first, but it's like once they figured it out, they was able to move the ball. Uh, Cam to Olsen was almost automatic. Hmm. McCaffrey was. <sighs> I don't know what McCaffrey did. McCaffrey just looks bigger and faster than what it was last year. If Bro. that's even possible. And it's just Bro. it's just his ability to just when he hits the hole, like he's he can't I have yet to see someone get a real clean shot at him. I know we're not supposed to, but when they're in full pass, you can hit the running back. And I'm I've yet to see him like really get popped even today, you know, against the against the Bills. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, with that in, and I got to give a shout out to my boy Armour. Broke loose a thirty yard run up the gut. I mean, it's like they forgot, you know, the fullback can run the ball. I mean, I was just smiling and laughing at the same time. Like, bro, did we just get, 
Uh, did we do a fullback dive for 30 yards? That's uh, what we do now? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Let me talk about that real quick. I just hope we don't do too much of that. Like, don't show too much. Because, you know, it's 31 other teams out there. Not many DCs are really keen on the fullback. So I just want to leave that as like an element of surprise. I know we want to get him the ball a little bit more. But um, I just wanted to lead that out, man. Just we know what he man. can do. Let's just keep that in the pocket, man. Let's just let it rock when the season start. I tell you what, though, man. If they start worrying about the fullback, I wish they would take their attention off of McCaffrey or or Olsen or man. Go ahead and key on the fullback and see what happens. <laughs> I hear you, man. I didn't mean to cut you off, Kevin. You're glad to continue, though. Yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, I was about to wrap it up, but I was saying, see, Armour's going to be that type of guy that when you're so bitter about worry about, he's going to be that silent killer. Now, his stat sheet ain't going to really, you know, get you anything off the fantasy league, but you think about two, possibly three catches, two or three runs mm. that either move the chains or, you know, possibly, you know, short yardage because I don't know if y'all noticed during the game, uh, they had Armour lined up in uh, 12 personnel as a running back, like a single back, kind of like how we did Tober. Hmm. And, you know, he was ripping off, you know, he ripped off a couple of runs where he was getting five, seven yards, and he caught a pass for, like, about nine yards. So the fact that I saw Armour lined up standing up, not in a three-point stand, but as, like, a running back, you know, as as his biggest fan, that did me good to see that in the game, you know, because I definitely didn't see that in practice. In practice, he was always three-point stands or – you know, lined up as an H back. So that was something that was different that I, I enjoyed seeing. But overall, though, it was a lot of juice at the practice. Panthers defensive line is as good as advertised based on the joint practice today. We'll see tomorrow. Four man rush will be back on the scene for the last practice at training camp tomorrow. So yeah, definitely. Hey Kev, if I already make the Pro Bowl, I'm gonna have to try to get you some uh, some buddy passes, bro. You deserve to go out there and see him play in the Pro Bowl. Just wanna put that out there because you've been a fan since day one. I don't have too much to touch on as far as the preview and as far as the joint practice. You know, I just expect us to do what we normally do is just dominate. You know, that's like our little brothers out there in Buffalo. They try to copy off us and do everything that, they, everything that we do. That's the aberration, in my opinion. They see that we're doing something well. They want to try to do it, too. That's a copycat league. Mm. But uh, one thing that a lot of people haven't touched on that I do want to touch on is something that, that I'm looking forward to. I want to see Brian Burns and Cody Ford. I know a lot of people were big on Cody Ford, wanted us to draft him. I'm not a fan of him at all. You know, I just, I just wasn't. I didn't like his feet. I didn't think he had a, uh, I didn't think he was going to be a good fit for us. But people were big on him or whatever. But I want to see my boy Burns abuse him. Hmm. If I can look for, if I can look forward to anything for this preseason game, Brian Burns, please abuse Cody Ford. <laughs> I need to show Panther Nation why he was not a good fit. And why Greg Little is probably a better fit for us. That's pretty much all I wanted to touch on. Also, um, something that we've seen in practice, you know, Curtis Samuel doing this thing on, on T. White. T. White is not a, a slouch corner, man. He's young. He's only been in the league a couple of years. So there are people that don't know about him, but he is one of the best corners in the football league. So to see Curtis Samuel doing this thing against him, that was something to see. Putting in work. Other than that, man, Trench, I'm a, I'm a hog molly specialist. That's what I'm looking forward to is that Cody Ford and Brian Burns matchup. Mm. Will, would you like to uh, jump in there? Yeah, you know, I mean, I've been reading around about what was going on at the joint practice. You know, and I think, think you know, if we're at the other side, you know, I read the Bills website as well just to get an idea of what they were saying. Mm. One thing that really stood out to me was Josh Allen, their young quarterback, was uh, picking Luke Keekley's brain after practice. I just thought that was kind of cool. You know, a young quarterback, you know, having the admiration and respect for Luke Keekley, you know, and wanting to improve on his craft as well. And who better to, you know, pick a brain out than Luke right. Keekley, you know, because Luke can tell the quarterback what he sees and how he's reacting, how he knows what your play is, what, you know, what things the offense is doing to, mm -hmm. you know, tip off a play and allow Luke to make that read. So, mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of cool. At the end of the day, you got to remember, you know, the Bills, unless we both make it to the Super Bowl, you know, we're not going to be playing them this year. So the objective of the joint practice is to give each other looks and make each other better. So I just thought that was one thing I thought, you know, I read about that was kind of cool. You know, and then in the, you know, there was some talk about, you know, Christian Miller and Shaq, you know, making plays in the red zone. Mm. And I guess they were going back and forth. The Bills were making some plays, too. You know, their wide receiver, Zay Jones. You no, know, Dante and him are going back and forth in a good battle. So, you know, it's just 
Yeah. I just like the competitive atmosphere that they got going on there. You know, both teams trying to get better. So, you know, I think you'll, we'll see what happens Friday when they finally lace up the pads and go live. Um, any idea on what, what our, uh, our starters are looking like for uh, Friday, or is it too early? Um, as far as what I'm seeing, you know, when I saw that, you know, on the offensive lines, uh, Matt Paradis and uh, Darrell Williams was locked and loaded, ready to go, that was encouraging, you know, to see with the uh, first joint practice. As I stated before, the plan has to have been slowly work them in. So I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, the starters on the offensive line coming this Friday as we play Buffalo because one of our favorite players to dissect this past offseason was Ed Oliver, who was drafted by the Buffalo Bills. And I got a nice good look at him up front. When you talk about quickness for a man that size, like, it's scary. Now, (laughs) don't shoot me for this comparison, but it reminded me of how what they said about Aaron Donald when he first came into the league playing – you know, along the defensive line. Now, he's too small. He's not going to be effective. Interesting. But, you know, he didn't make a lot of standout plays today, but I did notice that, you know, he has that quick twitch, that quick burst to attack the line. And, and if you ain't on your game, you know, you know you, you're going gonna to be in for a long day. But he's going against a veteran called Trey Turner for a good <laughs> majority of the part. And, and Trey, for the most part, kept, kept him in check overall. So... Right. That was definitely uh, good to see. So, Friday, what time was the game? Is it 7? Yeah, it's a 7 o'clock game. Good deal, good deal. Hey, Panther fans, make sure you guys check in on that, right? Um, I know. I don't think the starters are going to get that many snaps. That, that That's normally uh, week uh, week three of the preseason. We'll probably see more of their, more of the starters getting their, getting their reps in. But, hey, if you want to see what's going on, especially with the running backs, um, the, the receiver core, um, yeah, stay tuned. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. All right. Yeah, typically with the second preseason game, Tim, is usually normally they play into the second quarter. So usually they usually get about maybe four series, mm-hmm. possibly five, depending on how it goes. So I would expect to see our uh, starters play all the first quarter and maybe a series into the second uh, minimum on Friday. So. We'll be able to get a good look at what possibly could be in the mix for us offensively. So it, um, it's definitely going to be something worthwhile to uh, check out. I can't wait to see a Holyfield again. Um, I was a little worried about after that after that fumble. It was it was it was kind of like, kind of a bad situation. He was twisting, you know, coming up trying to break a tackle, and a guy came in with his helmet and popped the ball out. But um, for the most part, I know Holyfield. <laughs> Yeah, he he got some promise, man. They, I mean, all the all the running backs do. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, me me being a running back myself, high school, college, that's that's just something I watch. But yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think it's hard not to be a fan of Holyfield. You know, the guy yeah. from just what I read, he's the last guy off the field at practice. Yeah. You know, he's an underdog. He went undrafted because of you know his performance in underwear. You know, ignoring <laughs> what he did in helmet and pads. That so, boy I mean, can't run a no draws. You got to root for, you know, I think. The problem is, is it's a numbers game, so yeah. good players are not going to make the roster. Yeah. And it's just so much depth at that running means. We haven't even skinned Jordan Scarlett yet. So Exactly. I, mean, I think it's an uphill battle, but you got to be. Sure. Holyfield's definitely a guy you got to pull for. Yeah, I pull for him because he's a local guy. You know, I live mm-hmm. 10 minutes away from his dad. But um, if you want to be realistic, man, if you're just going to, you know, leave your feelings out of it, I think he's on the outside looking in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully he can improve, take care of the ball. But when you just look at like a guy like Bonifon, who expected that? That guy played big. You know, you look at the fact that Armour can actually take carries. That just adds value to Armour and takes away from the other guys. Yeah. You know, it's just an uphill, uphill battle. And then when you look at it, you really can't stuff him on a practice squad because of his name. Somebody going to want to snatch him up. Mm-hmm. So it's like we're, we're going to be in a tight situation when it comes to that running back room. All offseason long, we talked about, you know, what we thought was the, the most competitive position group, whether it was receiver, uh, left tackle, safety. It's really come down to running back. That's what we're looking at all, all together at this point because you just don't know how it's going to unfold. 
But I wish the best for Holyfield, man. I'm a big fan of him. I know he runs with power. He runs behind his pads. He always falls forward. He does all the little things right. It's just, like you guys pointed out, it's just an uphill, uphill battle. You got a lot of competition there in front of him. Yeah. And speaking of the wide receivers, though, I thought Terry Godwin was extremely impressive yes. in his debut. I mean, yes. thinking about a team that hasn't had a, um, has an opening at both kick and punt returner, I think he pretty much said, you know, I'm here. You know, this is this can be my role mm-hmm. on that 53-man roster and not only make the 53 but be activated on game day as that starting return man. Mm-hmm. Then he can add depth behind Hogan and Wright, you know, playing the slot receiver position. You know, he, he just has a skill set that I think, you know, can really make that case to be that final receiver to make the roster. I like him, man. Hey, well, you know, I'm not surprised about that one. <laughs> no, I'm not. Why is that, Larry? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I've been talking about him since the first episode we had after the draft. Yeah. I thought he had a lot of upside. I knew, I already knew the things that he does well, and he pretty much displayed it. You know, so yeah. like I said, I picked him to win that six receiver spot, and I'm going to stand behind that. Yeah, he runs until we until we break down to that 53. But I've been a fan of Godwin. I'm not surprised at all. I know that he's going to play the same way, you know, on Friday. Preseason game week three, he's going to play the same way. And if he has to be out there for week four competing for a spot, he's going to bring the same energy. So I have full confidence in him, hoping that we bring him in. I hope he makes the 53. And I know he's going to be an asset for us. He runs some smooth so, routes, man. So what about the elephant that's in the room in the running back room that we talked about every other running back but him? I mean, come on now. Cameron Artis Payne, fellas. Oh, I mean, no, no. Man, I don't that's... know about him. We just treat him like McCaffrey. That's if a you, given. If you don't think he's a lock right now, you're retarded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a second. <laughs> come on, man. He he's is getting big. It. Like, Cap is a yeah, baller. He, like, he the... has to be a lock for that two spot, man. He Cap is a be. baller. Cap is a baller, bro. He's a baller. Yeah, I mean, people get excited over Holyfield, but forget, you know, Cap's running with, you know, first and second team, so the competition level's a little bit higher. So he may not have those highlight plays, but I think he showed a lot as a receiver out of the backfield, yes. which is something we haven't really seen from him in the past. Yes. So that just shows what he's doing, improving his game to fit – the new offensive scheme and find ways to um, contribute. And on top of that, you look at the depth chart on the website, he's a starting kick returner right now. And I think he had one kick return at the last game. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, you know, just to be able to, his contributions on special teams, you know, trying to improve as a pass catcher, all these things he's doing to try to better himself to, you know, stay as that number two running back. Now, I will say he did have a breakdown in pass protection early in the game. That mm-hmm. first set, was his fault when the mm-hmm. linebacker blitzed through the A-gap. And ironically, that's that conversation we had yeah. last week about <laughs> sure running enough. back and pass protection, being able to stick their nose in and knock those linebackers mm-hmm. coming through the A-gap. So, you know, just keep an eye on that because I think ultimately that pass protection is going to be the ultimate decider on who's going to be able to help take reps from McCaffrey this year. Yep. Hey, well, I agree with you. Um, that first breakdown and pass coverage, that was on him. But at the end of the day, he's been in the system for a while. I think that was just a, a regular mental error. I don't expect to see that going forward. He has an advantage over the other guys in the room because he has quite a few years in the NFL system learning how to pass block. Those are still some things that a guy like Scarlett, Bondafon, they have to learn. I didn't mention Holyfield because for whatever reason, Georgia running backs – they know how to pass block when they get to the league. I guess they got a good coach. But Todd Gurley is one of the best pass blocking running backs in the league. I just think that they do something at Georgia where these guys come out and they're ready. That had a lot to do with why uh, the Patriots picked up Sony Michelle. You know, he's a good pass blocker. So I think that's just something that they lay down. Holyfield is an exceptional pass blocker. Uh, you ask, if you ask Kevin, he's seen him, you know, level some guys, level some linebackers in practice. So. Other than that, you know, Cat, I think he's a lot. That's just my yeah, opinion. Got he's be. definitely got to definitely got to improve with the mental lapses, but he did everything right. Even though the stats, he didn't show it. I don't think he had a big number in the run game as far as his stats. But when he had the ball, you knew it. You saw thirty four making explosive plays. That's what we need. Yeah, and uh, verify for Will. Yeah, he did have a kick return. Um, 
looking at the stats here, he had a one kickoff return for 22 yards. Uh, the only other kickoff return was for 24 yards. Uh, you know, Bears only scored 13 points, so we didn't have a lot of time for you know a lot of kickoff returns here. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's how that goes. But yeah, I, I, God, I mean. It's going to hurt because one of these guys is not going to make the team where, you know, as we stated, you know, Armour showing his versatility. That's going to take away some snaps. And we already know McCaffrey is going to play, what, at least 80, 85 percent snaps anyway. So, you know, you just got to show that versatility and do something on special teams. And, hey, you know, Cap, you know, being placed as of now as our starting kick returner, that adds more back to his resume. I just hope that finally in his fifth year that he has the opportunity to be the first to get those possibly three, four carries when McCaffrey on the sideline sipping Gatorade, as Will like to say. All right. So you guys stay tuned for that game on Friday. It's going to be interesting. Regardless of who's going to be on the field, we're pretty loaded, so – is it's going to be a highlight regardless. It's going to it's going to be it's going to be nice to see what we have going forward regardless. So stay tuned folks. The Panthers are going to be real this year. Believe that. All right, so I believe we covered all the topics of the evening. Um you guys have anything to say before we uh, wrap up out of here? Yeah, I want, I want our fans to uh, submit some questions to us, you know, yeah. random questions about life. It don't got to be about football, but we want to be more interactive with our fans. Absolutely. We want to get to know you guys. We want you guys to get to know us. So, you know, hit us up on the website. Hit us up in the email. Hit us up on the Facebook page, Instagram. Follow all our platforms, but ask us questions. You know, we want to get to know you guys. That's all I got to say for tonight. And I just want to say, ease up on Will Greer. Damn. He's a rookie. That's his first start ever. You know, I know he's up on Trey Boston, too. <laughs> yeah, they came out Will, boy. God, oh, man, he sucks. He threw all those interceptions. I believe blah, 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 blah. Bro, come on now. Yeah, they were hard on Will Greer, and they were definitely hard on Trey Boston. Like, oh, he's the same player that he, he was before he left. And, bro, Stop. <laughs> dude played nobody can't. <laughs> None. <laughs> Two practices. Like, what you expect? Come on, man. The IQ was there. Exactly. Exactly. He'll get his. He'll get. He'll get right, man. These, these cats, man. They want that. But e- I will. But I will say, I saw this and I put this in a rush review tonight. Um, he did let Cole Beasley put a nasty juke move on him today in practice. That was not probably like, ah, oh, Trey. Ooh. No, no, Ooh. no. It had to, it had that boys in the hood feeling like Ricky. I mean, it was just Trey just looked bad. Like how you let Cole Beasley make you look like you trying to check Allen Iverson on a crossover? It was just that oh, no. bad, bro. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, that's why Ron like matchups though. Okay, you can't put big Trey Boston on five seven, one hundred and sixty pound Cole Beasley. That's what that's <laughs> that's for like that's for Kevon Seymour, man. You can't you can't do that. To, you can't do that to Trey, man. That's wrong. Mm. Mm. Nah, that was in open field. Beasley caught a slant and was cut under the field, and then he just oh, no. put the move on him. Yeah, man, that's what that I tried was. to cover for him, but I guess I had no way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you keep it real here in the four man yeah. rush. If you, you gotta keep it real, he gave him that. He gave him that. <laughs> up, we gonna tell you about it. You effed up, you know. Yeah, I, I used to love. I used to salivate when I catch somebody in open field on them hash marks. But come on downfield, see. Look at it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, man, good times, man, good times. All right, folks, so, well, you know, I, I hate to wrap it up, but, you know, this, this, these, these things happen. So um, we pretty much gave you all you need to hear so far about the uh, uh, Panthers uh, training with the Bills, the upcoming game with the Bills, and the uh, last game with the Bears. So uh, we're going to leave you guys with that information and uh, check you out next week. Um, so on behalf of your host here, Timmy Vio, Kevin, Larry and Will, uh, Monty tried to make it, but he had to work, you know, because we on that grind in, in the four-man rush. That's how we roll. And, of course, big thanks to uh, Norris, um, Canardo, and the rest of the four-man rush team. I will get your names right, fellas. My fault. Um, <laughs> Jadarius and, uh, J- and Vince. Vince. Yeah, yeah. J- thank you. Jadarius, J- Jadarius and Vince. You know, the four-man rush keeps growing, man. You know, we, we got something special going on. So, you know, we it's all good. It's all good. Hey, the fans, football fans, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, 
uh, podcast of the Four Man Rush, whether it's the morning, afternoon, or evening. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your time. Oh, and check out the Four Man Rush website, please. www.thefourmanrush.com. Also, check us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you're a Falcon fan, listen, come see me in the A. Let's talk trash in person. Ooh, ooh, dirty birds. You have just been called out. <laughs> Y'all hold it down, guys. Keep pounding. The Foreman Rush is brought to you by the love and respect of and for the Carolina Panthers and Carolina Panther fans everywhere. Keep pounding. The Four Men Rush is a non-affiliate of the Carolina Panther organization. All thoughts, assessments, and content of this podcast is directly related to the Four Men Rush exclusively. Thank you.